How's it going, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to go over my Miram Sentinel Worm deck. Now, before you say, oh no, not another one of these videos. Well, this is not exactly your stock standard Miram Sentinel Worm deck. I could sit here and tell you to jam powerful dragons like the Terror of the Peaks, Ancient Copper Dragon, and Gold Span Dragon. And you'd likely look at me and say, well, no shit, I could have figured that out for myself. Well, instead, we're going to be looking at some older dragons and other cards that would go really well with Miram, and some you might even not even know exists. First up, we have an old favorite set of dragons of mine. Killed Mouth Dragon is the start. For 5 red red, you get a 5-5 five, five flyer. Not exactly the most exciting or mana efficient stat line out there, but the rest of the card is what gets interesting. It has Amplify 3, which means for every dragon card you reveal when you cast the spell, it gets 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. So, if you, as an example, if you reveal 3 other dragon cards as you cast Killed Mouth Dragon, it'll enter with 9 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, making it into a 14-14 flyer a little more impressive, but still kind of vanilla. The last ability though is what makes it the most interesting. It has the ability to tap and deal damage to any target equal to the number of counters on it. So, Killmouth Dragon basically has a gigantic flamethrower attached to it. So if you can't slam into your opponent with the big fat dragon, you can do the next best thing and either shoot down what's blocking you, or you can just blast them right in the face and keep on trucking. And with Miram, you get two of them getting these Amplify triggers as it goes into play, and you can just start torching your opponent or smashing their face right away. Another older dragon, which is a blast from the past for me, is Bogarden Hellkite. This was recently reprinted in the AFR Commander decks, and it's another 5-5 flyer for 6 red red. Not all that impressive for the stat line, but this also has flash and an ETB ability, which says it deals 5 damage divided however you want to as many targets as you can hit with it. So if you times that by 2, you're likely wrecking somebody's board, or you're just going to start blasting away at their life total for like 10 damage off of the two Hellkites coming into play, and then you're going to have two 5-5 five, five flyers to swing at their life total. So you can pretty much have somebody's life total in one fell swoop. Another good dragon that you can copy with Miram's ability is Dragon Broodmother. For two red, 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 green, you get 4-4 four, four Flyer, which seems understated for the cost, but every upkeep, you get a 1-1 one, one Dragon token with Flying and Devour 2. Devour 2 means that for when the creature comes into play, you can sacrifice any number of creatures, and for however many creatures you've sacrificed, you put that many counters on there equal to the Devour number, so in this case, 2. The neat thing here is once you get the token copy and the original original copy of the Broodmother on the board and you go to the next upkeep, you'll get two dragon tokens and you can let one of them eat the other dragon token. So you're essentially going to net one 3-3 three, three flyer every turn instead of just a pair of 1-1s one, every turn. Another old card that I really like and I think is really fun in this kind of deck is Kaiga the Tidestar. For five and a blue, you get a 5-5 five, five flyer that allows you to steal your opponent's permits if they do anything to deal with it outside of exiling. So getting two of them means you get to steal two things, and if they don't deal with them, they're just going to get flown over and smashed in the face for five to ten damage every turn. So you know how I mentioned Ancient Copper Dragon near the intro of the video? Well, let's look for an alternative to that, since the Copper Dragon, as of the time of this recording, is about 60 bucks. How about Null Spine Dragon? This is an older card that is a 7-5 flyer for 5 red red that says discard your hand and then draw cards equal to the damage dealt to target opponent this turn. So, I mean, we're already going to be smashing with other dragons. I mean, Miram's a 6-6 on its own. And I believe the average roll on a D20 for the Copper Dragon is around 11. So if you swing with just a pair of dragons, you're going to be hitting that average pretty often. And sometimes you may even get well past that because you're getting two of these Null Spines coming down at the same time. So you might load your hand up with 25 car plus cards just in one big hit. The last dragon that I thought was kind of neat from an older set is Varric's Bladewing. This was printed back in the Dominaria set. Uh, for two red red, you get a 4-4 four, four flyer, pretty much on rate, that has kicker three, which means you pay three additional colorless mana and you get a bonus. The bonus here is Varix's brother, Kerox Bladewing, a 4-4 four, four flying token dragon. So if you pay the kicker with Miram on the board, you'll get two Varixes and one Kerox because the Kerox will get legend ruled out of the game. But you'll get 12 power worth of flyers for seven mana, which is pretty good on the raid. Outside of some older dragons that I'm just going to jam into this deck, I want to make a funny way to make this deck a little different than a lot of other ones I've seen. So what would be better than having Miram on the board with this deck? Well, how about multiple copies of Miram? So how do we pull that off since she's a legendary? 
pretty easily if you're willing to lose a clone or two in the process. Let's use some cards like Stunt Double, Mirror Image, Altered Ego, Mirror Hall Mimic, Spark Double, and Irenica's Vile Duplication. So how does this work? By each of the clones coming into play as a copy of the dragon, Mirum in this case, you'll get a token copy off of that clone, which is non-legendary. And then the clone itself will die because it is a legendary copy of the Mirum. But you get to keep that token clone copy. Any future clones that you draw then can be used on the non-legendary copy of the spell. And you get to keep all the clones and all the tokens that are coming out in the future. So you can actually have multiple Mirums just churning out as the game goes on. Mirror Hall Mimic has the bonus of being able to be disturbed out of the graveyard and attached to a non-legendary token copy of the commander. And then it'll just threaten to spit out a new Mirum copy every turn that it's not dealt with. The last couple clones in the list above they're a little bit different. They do not create legendary copies when they come in. Iranica's Vile Duplication is from the new uh, Baldur's Gate set, and it creates a non-legendary copy of something. So you're just going to create a flat out token copy that's non-legendary of Miram with that. Spark Double, however, is going to kind of rip a page out of the uh, Volo playbook from the AFR version. It's going to create a non-legendary version of itself as a clone, and then it's going to create a token copy. So you'll end up with three Miram on the board right as that comes into play. One final card reprinted in Battle for Baldur's Gate that I really like and I think synergizes well with all these uh, token creations that we're doing is the Bramble Sovereign. For two green green, you get a 4-4 Dryad that says whenever another non-token creature enters the battlefield, you can pay one and a green. And if you do, create a token copy of the creature. So in essence, this is going to add kicker of one and a green to every creature spell in the deck that's not legendary. So it allows you to generate an additional token of a non-legendary creature as they hit the battlefield. And this would also include that spark devil I was talking about earlier. So what did you think? Did you like seeing some of these older dragons that I don't usually see in the list? or the cloning plan, which is kind of a fun side game to mess with this deck. What I take from all of this after digging through and trying to build this deck is that you don't need a lot of the high priced, high firepower dragons that usually headline this deck list. So please mention down in the comments below, did I miss something fun that you think should have been mentioned here? Do you know of other dragons or other cards that you would play with this? So just to kind of get away from the, oh, let's just slam the big powerful dragons and forget everything else. If you like this video, please check out some of my other content, like, share, subscribe. I greatly appreciate everything you guys do out there for me. Thank you for helping grow this channel. And as always, thank you for watching and have a great day.